welcome back to Tom's World Scale Model Series. In this installment, we unbox Mang's British Medium A Whip and Tank. If you enjoy programming on scale modeling, then show your support by subscribing to this channel. Leave us a comment, like, dislike, or share the video with friends. Clicking the notification bell gives you alerts when we post new content. Or visit the channel Tom's World for a friendly visit for a complete list of all our videos. As tanks first appeared on the battlefield in World War I, tactics for their effective use had to be developed. The slow lumbering Mark I heavies were effective at smashing enemy lines, but planners saw the need for a lighter, faster vehicle that could operate alongside the heavies and exploit the breakthroughs, and thus was born the medium A tank. Named after the fast and sleek English hunting and racing dog, the Whippet would exploit gaps and create havoc and terror among and behind the enemy lines. So stay with us as we unbox Meng's fine scale representation of the vehicle that ushered in the era of fast mechanized cavalry. Hey fellas, welcome back and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me again. Today we're tackling a new project and we're unboxing Meng's well what they're calling the Mark A Whippet British Medium Tank. This is going to be kit number TS Tango Sierra 021. It was released in 2015 as a new release new tool. And the retail price is going to be 34 US or $43 Canadian today. And we'll put the box dimensions there in the insert if you want to get a sense of how big the box actually is. So this model is actually from the same Tyrannosaurus line as the Bernoulli FT-17 we built on the series, but it was released a year after the FT-17. Although the kit is titled Mark A, there was only one variant of the vehicle. It was sometimes referred to as the Triton Chaser after its designer William Triton, who incidentally also designed the Mark I tank as well. The tank was officially called the Medium A, but it acquired the nickname of Whippet after the English fast-running racing and hunting dog breed, perhaps more so as wishful thinking. It looks like the rear of the vehicle is depicted on the cover, but this is actually the front, uh, and this is its forward driving direction. Uh, the engines are in front of the crew compartment, whereas most tanks, uh, maybe with the exception of uh, the Israeli Merkava, have their engines behind the crew. The tank was driven by two 45 horsepower bus engines and had a very complicated transmission which uh, made it notoriously difficult to drive, and it could achieve a scintillating top speed of 13 kilometers or 8 miles an hour. It seems laughable these days, but actually in its time that was considered fast for a tank. The vehicle had a crew of three, a driver, machine gunner, and commander, uh, the latter likely manning a machine gun as well. It's interesting to note that the medium tank had the same running gear assembly as the first tank prototype, the Little Willy. It has no suspension, so we could imagine how rough the ride must have been, especially in the moon-like landscape of no man's land. Uh, the tank was armed with four Hotchkiss 303 machine guns, which pointed in all four directions, and that uh, kind of suggests it was operating behind enemy lines and could be potentially surrounded. Although several hundred were ordered, only 200 were produced, and they began to appear on the battlefield in December 1917. The Whippet was not a great design, and it quickly disappeared from English service after the war, although it was acquired by foreign armies including the White Russians and the Japanese. And TACOM incidentally has a Japanese version, which we'll see in the product uh, line review coming up. Apparently the conditions for the crews were absolutely appalling, indeed so bad that they had to cycle the crews daily. You could imagine the heat and fumes from the machine guns, and only the driver had a seat so the crew would get tossed around inside the compartment. Remember, no suspension on this vehicle. Along with the heat and fumes from the engine and all the smoke and flying bullets and shells meant the crew were exposed to hellish conditions. Uh, that made the vehicle for all intents and purposes unpractical to operate. And one other item, uh, these odd brackets, in case you're wondering what they are, they would drape a long strip of canvas and attach them to these uh, posts here, these brackets, and uh, the canvas would drape over the top of the tracks, and I'm assuming that would be a sort of makeshift fender. So there it is. As always, before we dive into the box, let's briefly look at the Mang Medium A product line. We'll also look at what alternatives there are if we're looking to build a World War I Whippet. Although just a few manufacturers have released 135th scale Whippet kits, we're still presented with some solid choices. 1991 and 92 saw the release of these two multimedia kits from Accurate Armor. Accurate is UK based and the Whippet and other kits and aftermarket are available from their website. These appear to be reboxings of the same kit, that's K for Kilo 010. It's mixed media and includes resin and etched brass and there was an update to the kit in 2005 to include full color decals. Reviews are favorable for the kit citing its high level of detailed and solid part fit. But being a resin kit, it's likely best suited for experienced builders who like a challenge. Current price is 78 pounds sterling, 105 US or 133 Canadian dollars. 
Yamaha released this Kit EM Echo Mic 4003 in 1996 as an initial release new tool. This is likely the model most familiar to military scale builders. The product has been around for a while and it was for a time the only viable kit for North American hobbyists. With length and length tracks and good part detail and fit, the kit has earned favorable reviews from builders. The product is discontinued but quite a few retailers still have it in stock at this time. Current price 48 US dollars. Tacom released two Whippet boxings in 2015, perhaps as a direct competitor to Meng. Kit 2025 features snap together workable tracks, photo etch, posable hatches, glossy instructions with full color paint guides, along with superb molding, detail, and fit. Kit 2025X for x rays, the same Whippet kit as 2025, but with parts to depict a Japanese version. This boxing comes with a commander figure, Japanese type machine guns, and markings, as well as an updated paint guide to accurately depict the Japanese variant. Kit 2025 retails for about 52 US and 2025X is a limited edition. Only 1,680 were produced and it's available only in Japan. Price if you can actually find one is about 6,210 yen or about 54 US dollars. In addition to our sample boxing, in 2016 Meng released this special edition, Kit TS021S. It's the same whippet as our Kit TS021 with the addition of four nicely sculpted and posed World War I infantry figures. Our current price today is 52 US, just $10 more than the base kit. Perfect for anyone looking to build a Whippet diorama. Because of its lower price of 33 US as compared to 52 US for the Tacom model, and because of its availability and the quality associated with the brand, the Ming Whippet was an ideal choice for our unboxing and build project. All right, time for the big unboxing. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> oh there it is. Like we always say, so many models, so little time. It may not be packed the same way since I ransacked through the boxes before recording the video, but uh, here it is. We get 10 sprues, some repeats, all opaque. We get no clear sprues, no figures, or no stowage. It's a kind of a no frills kit. We also get our hull, a little stranded wire for our tow cables, decals, instructions. 370 parts, 144 are track links, that leaves us with 226 parts for the tank itself, so fairly low part count. So let's get everything laid out to see what we're working with. Starting with the paperwork, there's this contest announcement, build a main kit and get a chance to win cash and prizes. I guess we can scan the QR code if we're so inclined to get more details. We also get a nice glossy full color paint and marking guide. It looks like we do get the option of marking two different English vehicles. And uh, finally our instructions, a little stapled booklet, nothing fancy, just grayscale print on ordinary white paper. The paper's kind of rough, it's kind of nice. Uh, we'll have a look inside but we'll flip through it fairly quickly. So feel free to pause the video if you want to study the pages more closely. We get a small decal sheet. Some boxings of this kit have cartographed decals, but it appears our version is an in-house Meng print. It's got the markings for the two vehicles depicted on the paint guide, but oddly it also has German crosses for a captured vehicle, I presume, and uh, Russian markings as well. But uh, oddly enough, I didn't see these mentioned in the paint guide or in the instructions. And more drama, the box top says three paint schemes are provided. At this point I'm asking, is it two, three, or four? Now back to the decals, the ink is very matte, as is the carrier film. We'll have to see how these go on in the build episode. And it appears we don't get the running gear plate identifiers either, so it looks like we're going to have to paint those on. Some boxings of this kit come with string, but it looks like ours has a short length of braided metal wire, and that's going to be for our tow cables. The engine enclosure and lower hull come as one piece, and this is really what Meng is renowned for. This beautiful sculpting, exquisite detail, and ultra-crisp casting. You can almost cut your finger if you run it along the detailing. The casting is that sharp. Although this is a relatively low-priced, no-frills kit, there's no compromise in the casting. It's absolutely world-class. The Hotchkiss 303s are about as fine as you can get in styrene. Just amazing detail. And look at the stick ammunition. 
It's going to definitely be a test for our fine brush painting, but just amazing detail. The kit has a few very small and delicate pieces like these tow cable hangers, but note the tapering sprue gates. That definitely makes getting the parts off the tree just a little bit easier. And here's the drive chain detail. Looks fantastic. And here are the armored air intake louvers. And we also get a few grousers. And yes, the obligatory pile of tank wheels, although these things are more like rollers. And here's our running gear plate. Very crisp detailing. I just love these older vehicles. The riveted construction is just perfect for pin washing. And here's the mufflers. Looks like they'll need a little bit of hauling out, but they got us started with these little depressions. Doesn't look like any of the sprues have uh, slide molding. And here's our Pioneer tools. Very nice, very great detail. Again, this is really what Meng is known for. And here's some of the casement parts. Again, just beautiful bolt detail. And we do do some bending in this kit, but it's not photo etch. We can see here on the front casement plate, the joints are scored. They're also scored on the back. And then we'll bend the sides and glue them to the proper angle. It's kind of an interesting way to build up the crew compartment. There's a few pieces like that. And finally our tracks. They're single snap together links which build up into articulated lengths. They're molded in semi-gloss black styrene. From what I can see they're just about perfect. Now on the back each does have a knockout but to our relief the surface is totally hidden once the track is assembled. This is a much better design than our Mang Renault FT17 tracks. If you remember those had weird and nasty heart to clean up mold nipples. And that'll do it for this episode. Check back soon as we take our Mang Whippet project to its construction phase. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, leave us a like or dislike, share the video, or just grumble in the comments. Or drop by the channel Tom's World for a friendly visit and for a complete list of all our videos. In the meantime, keep your trenches dry, stay well, and all the best.